Thanks to Tezos for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's see if the brightness on these two really is that different. iPhone, take that up to 100. Okay, that's good, I'm used to it. S22 Ultra will go all the way up to 100. Ah, my eyes! This is probably my favorite video to make all year. It's Pro versus Ultra. This is the best of the best. The iPhone 13 Pro versus the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. These phones are as amazing as smartphones have ever been. And they did come out six months apart, and when the next iPhone comes out, we'll revisit. But for right now, these are the top two smartphones you can buy from Apple and Samsung. And before this video is over, we will declare a winner. There's no cop out, whatever's best for you. A winner will be picked at the end. We're gonna get into all the nuances of everything that these phones can do, but I do wanna start with a blind camera test. How good do you think your eye is? Can you tell the iPhone photos versus the Samsung photos? So here we go. All right, so look at both of these photos and look for everything. Look how it's handling shadows. Look how it's handling contrast. Look at bright lights, look at the sky, look at the colors that you see. And when it comes to portrait mode, look at the cutouts here. Look how the cutouts work on the glasses, work how they work on non-human things. See how it's handling lower light versus higher light, different colors. And I, I guess the, the wrench in this whole thing is that the iPhone has started to get more Samsung-like with its processing with higher contrast. So I'm gonna assume that maybe you did not guess which one is right, but in case you were wondering, the S22 Ultra is A, and the iPhone 13 Pro, that was B. So like I said, the iPhone's gotten a bit more Samsung-y, uh, but at the same time, Samsung has started to kind of tone down their saturation and contrast that they've done in years past. So in a lot of ways, the processing of these cameras, and I'm guessing you could tell, is very, very similar. So the iPhone photos, to my eye, uh, are crushing the shadows more than in years past, similar to how Samsung used to do it. Uh, iPhone photos, though, hold extreme HDR highlights better than Samsung. I think that is uh, objectively better. Uh, the choice by Apple to limit highlights results in kind of an overall flatter and dimmer looking photo than the S22 Ultra. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You're getting consistency across every photo on the iPhone side. And as far as they're easier to take into editing program, manipulate, the iPhone tends to be better. So Samsung photos, on the other hand, are lifting the shadows, allowing you to see a lot more detail in those darker areas. Uh, but in certain instances, the S22 Ultra will blow out highlights. As you can see right here, uh, in service of bringing up those shadows. Samsung made a very like obvious choice to choose brightness over consistency. And I think for the average you know, person, that is not a bad thing at all. That means colors pop more, more vibrant, overall images brighter, especially if you are viewing them on the crazy bright, which we will talk about, uh, S22 Ultra screen. One interesting thing though, if you view the pictures from the iPhone on just a regular display, not on the iPhone, they're going to look very consistent, maybe a bit flat. If you look at the photos that were taken on S22 Ultra on a regular display, there's going to be a bit more color to them, but not as much contrast as you're actually going to see on the phone itself, so bear that in mind. So the verdict here, if you showed the S22 Ultra photos, and again, both of these on the phones themselves, side by side to an iPhone 13 Pro photo, I feel like most people are gonna choose the S22 Ultra largely because it's brighter and more vibrant. Personally, I prefer the consistency, of the iPhone overall since I like editing my pictures, but it's hard to deny how really good those S22 Ultra photos look when you get them in the conditions that are perfect. On the positive side, Samsung could always issue a software update that could adjust those highlights. Maybe Samsung find a way to do that and not sacrifice overall brightness of the image. If they do, I think Samsung has a very clear path to having the best photos on any smartphone for quite some time. And in a world of iPhone and Pixel phones, that is saying a lot for how good these cameras are. Where Samsung does have an advantage uh, is just in the hardware side, especially the camera hardware. And there is, there's no way around it. And this is where I think you see the advantage of the S22 Ultra coming out about six-ish months later than where the iPhone 13 Pro came out. 
So you got four cameras on the back, not much different to what we saw last year, um, but still packing a mean punch. Main camera is a 108 megapixel camera. There's a 12 megapixel ultra wide, two 10 megapixel telephotos on there as well, one at 3X and the other at 10X. And if you compare that hardware to the iPhones, three 12 megapixel sensors and max three times telephoto, like, I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? What's impressive is what both of these cameras can provide in terms of processing. And this was, I'm still just surprised every time I see this. When I take a photo on, especially on a Samsung phone or even a Pixel, when you see the processing like happen after you shoot it, uh, it's awesome to see. Uh, these phones do an incredible job with AI and on-device processing. And the fact that we're comparing these two, honestly, close your eyes, pick a phone, and the camera is going to be better than pretty much any DSLR we had even a few years ago. Uh, and that is saying a lot, or at least in the right hands, it could be better than any DSLR we've seen in a few years ago. It's pretty awesome to see. So regardless of whether or not you are iOS or Android, I think a lot of us can agree we're all team crypto. And I think one of the biggest players in the crypto space is NFTs. And so understanding what they are, how they're more than just, you know, save JPEGs, uh, and also it can be daunting to try to understand the technology that goes behind it. And that's where Tezos comes into play. So first and foremost, it's an energy efficient blockchain, which is not words you generally hear go together. And it's a huge deal for the blockchain world. Uh, they also have an amazing developer community, decentralized apps, NFT marketplace on there where you can learn and understand and then buy if you want uh, any sort of NFTs. If you're a race fan too, you've probably seen their logo in Formula One. They sponsor the Red Bull car. They're also all over McLaren cars too, which is uh, it's kind of a cool thing uh, to see. But if you want to just educate yourself, you don't have to buy anything or just learn about NFTs in general, uh, I'll link down below to Tezo. It's an awesome place to start. And if you wanna buy or get into NFT creation or decentralized apps, Tezos is the best place to be. It's also one of the most reputable blockchains going. So it's a product that's gonna be there for a while. Service is gonna be there for a while and it's a great way to learn. Link to them down below. Photos is one thing, uh, but video, at least for me, is increasingly becoming an important part of the devices. The iPhone has been pretty widely respected as having the best video quality uh, of any smartphone out there for many, many years. And I think in a lot of ways, even this generation, that's still the case. Uh, HDR video is up to 4K60, that looks awesome. And there is sort of detail where you want it, and it looks good just right out of the camera. And the iPhone 13 Pro also has ProRes video support. Now admittedly, it's not a feature I use often because those file sizes are ridiculous. Uh, but the quality with ProRes is substantially better. And we have decided to use it for short periods of time. Uh, the option to use it for that is great. Uh, Samsung though, has the best video quality on the Android side, hands down. And I don't mean that as a, like a backhanded compliment at all. Uh, and in some ways, uh, it best what the iPhone can offer in video. The biggest place you're going to see that is with resolution. So the Ultra can shoot up to 8K video, and there's a rather big crop when you use this mode. It can only see sort of the main camera, so it's not implemented perfectly, but the video quality is pretty good. I mean, just look at the video quality here. I mean, you can see how amazing it is. Samsung video is better than years past, and maybe because they're letting the Qualcomm chip do a lot of that processing, uh, but unlike their photos, the shadows are pretty crushed hard at times. Saturation on the video, again, looks more boosted. iPhone here produces a flatter image that's still more true to life. So your eye might vary on what you like more. I'm still gonna probably err on the side of the flatter because I know I can do more in post with it. So with the cameras here, this is where you can see the real message of both these phones. The iPhone is not packing the latest features and it isn't trying to wow you with specs at all. Uh, but the photo quality is consistent and it's good every time. The S22 Ultra is packing some of the coolest features. This isn't always executing at the top of its class for everything. But when the conditions are right, Samsung Photos blow everything else out of the water. It's just not gonna do it every single time. All right, so let's talk about display and I get it. It's kind of an old John Rettinger trope at this point. Um, but I love screens. And I love great screens, and Samsung's been at the forefront of great screens um, 
forever and they even you know make the screen that's in the iPhone uh, but honestly screen tech hasn't changed that much over the last few years once we kind of got to peak screen so to me at least that means HDR 120 Hertz OLED displays that's about it this year though Samsung found something new to change that seems small on paper but is really noticeable that's a brightness the S22 Ultra is rocking 1750 nit display. And for reference, the iPhone 13 Pro with an already very bright display, it's a max of 1200 nits. That is a gigantic difference. A lot of times you see the max brightness on HDR content and that kind of thing. But using the phones and seeing the phones, the brightness is very apparent. And you're going to notice it. It's not like a life-changing difference, but is the next step making screens as good as they can possibly be, especially in direct sunlight outside. If you wanna sit outside and use your phone, you're going to want to pick up the S22 Ultra and it's going to be stupidly apparent uh, which phone is brighter. It's the whole point behind that silly intro you know, that we did to illustrate just how bright this display is. It is on a completely another level. All the brightness stuff aside, the iPhone S22 displays are, are very similar in the best possible ways. Color contrast, vibrancy, it is all there. And it really just comes down to brightness size and then, you know, notch or cutout. So while Samsung does make the displays, or Samsung Display makes it for uh, the iPhone, Apple does their own color science. So while the hardware there is relatively similar, how they display colors is a little bit different. And display is not the only similarity between these two phones though. Uh, iPhone, same hardware we, we know and either love or loathe. S22 Ultra on the other hand uh, is different, but also the same. So comparing it to the S21 Ultra, it seems to be a new design. But comparing it to the Note 20, you have to see similarities. And also the huge inspiration I think for this phone. Not the first to say this, but this is the reality of sort of the resurrection of the Note line. Look no farther than the squared off edges, the size. Most importantly, it's got an S Pen. I might as well have called this the S22 Note. I think that's great. It always made sense to combine the Ultra and the Note line and now, and you have it here now in kind of the most perfect Samsung phone form factor. Um, after Samsung stepped back from the Note line, I think we're all wondering where the S Pen was going towards. The Fold series made a ton of sense. And even though it supports it, not the same experience because you can't sort of silo it anywhere. Um, but now, it's in the Ultra, and it makes, honestly, all the sense in the world. This, alongside the camera, is the defining feature of the phone. And so it takes sort of beyond your typical everyday, you know, rectangle smartphone, and for that matter, you know, it takes it beyond what the iPhone can do. And that being said, the utility of the S Pen is very much down to the person. I don't use it all that much. I like knowing that it's there, but I know there are lots and lots of people out there who love them some S Pen and use it every day. It's just not me. But since this is an ultra phone, I'm glad Samsung took the step to include it. Now you at least have the choice. The rest of this phone though, is the exact same argument you always get between Samsung and iPhones. Do you want face ID? Or do you want the best ultrasonic fingerprint sensor out there? It's under the display. You want a huge battery and fast charging? Or do you want MagSafe? A15, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Do you want iOS? Do you want Android? Uh, these are all areas that you probably already know the answer to. Both these phones are the the peak example uh, of the iPhone versus Android debate. And for the people that already know, your mind's already made up. But what people I love to talk to in these videos are those that don't care. Are those that just want to pick the best smartphone for them. And that's where this answer is going to come from. I said I was going to pick a winner. And here it is. If both of these phones are on a table or sitting in a store, I'm going to pick up the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Despite it being $200 more expensive, there's oftentimes a lot of deals and trade-ins that Samsung offers. But if I have no OS preference, I'm getting the use of the S Pen, whether I choose to or not, it's there for me. I'm getting a display that looks insane and looking at a phone is how you interact with everything it can do. That alone is reason to consider this. The camera, while not perfect in every situation, is insanely good in almost every situation and close to perfect uh, in some. The video, while not being the best out there, is still really good, and I dig having extra resolution to being able to shoot with 8K. Uh, I like having fast charging, I like having the reverse wireless charging. I certainly will miss MagSafe on here, but you are getting an incredible phone, an incredible package that pretty much does everything 
really, really well. If you're already in the iOS ecosystem, get the iPhone 13 Pro, you probably already have it and you're gonna be very happy. But for those that haven't made up their minds on OS or aren't in the ecosystem, get the S22 Ultra. You're going to absolutely love it. And when you get there, tell them John sent you.